Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Elisa and I am so happy to have you here. Today I am back with another Chats with Elisa video, but before I get into this video, I did want to make a few quick notes. Now if you watched my last video or you may have noticed on my YouTube channel, just in general, my profile, I have changed my YouTube channel name to Life with Icy. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but but I'll leave my Instagram handle here if you want to follow me for updates. I do plan on sharing the full story behind why I decided to change my YouTube channel name to Life with Icy. But long story short, basically, Icy is a family nickname that I've had ever since I was a very young girl. It's a nickname that my grandma gave me in the Philippines, so it holds a lot of sentimental value. Most of my family and very close friends of mine call me Icy. And so I was kind of playing around with like different catchphrases, different kind of like names, and I really liked the ring of life with Icy. And I do share my life online, or at least parts of it. So I thought that was a really cool way to just sum up my channel in general. It feels a little bit more personal. I will explain that further on, like I said in a travel reset video, that I have planned this weekend. I just got back from vacation. If you haven't watched those travel vlogs, I'll also leave a link to those videos down below. But enough rambling. In today's video, I am going to be talking about my six month update as a legal assistant. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you may know that I am a legal assistant. I started my job back in January of this year. And since then, I have been documenting my experience as a legal assistant. I've even vlogged a few work days in my life. If any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, you should go ahead and check those videos out down below. I will link them. And I just kind of wanted to provide you guys an update on how it's been because I do like to provide my insight and just my experience in general as a legal assistant. I feel like a lot of you guys really appreciate that content because there are some of you who are looking to get into the legal industry and you know, which is kind of like a little bit of guidance or you have so many questions. So I thought I would film another update for you guys. With that said, I do have some notes that I typed up and I also listed a few frequently asked questions that I get that I thought that I would answer in this video. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first main question that I guess I want to answer to kick off this video is, do I regret becoming a legal assistant? What has been my experience been so far? And I would say, no, I don't regret becoming a legal assistant. I've definitely been very open with some of the struggles I've had in the beginning and it being very stressful and overwhelming at first. But honestly, that's with any new job that you start that you're not familiar with. Of course, it's gonna be overwhelming and stressful at first. And so for me, now that it's been a few months, I definitely feel more comfortable and I definitely feel like the things that felt foreign to me or the things that felt so overwhelming are just now part of my routine and I think that's natural. So I definitely don't regret becoming a legal assistant. If anything, I think it's really honed my professional skills and it's also given me a lot of insight into the corporate world, which is, can be a whole separate topic on like the pros and cons of working a more corporate job. I can do that in another video if you guys are interested in that. But in general, I really do enjoy it. And a lot of my past work experience has been in the administrative world. So for me at least, I enjoy the work that I do. I enjoy getting to work with attorneys and following up with clients. And also I like how every week is different. I feel like this could lead to another frequently asked question I get is, is it stressful to be a legal assistant? You know, what's the workload like? And I would say it definitely varies. One week is not going to be the exact same as the next week. For example, this past week that I just had, I'm filming this on a Friday, it's been really slow. Like we didn't get any new case signups, which is really strange. But usually what I find is that if one week is more chill and more slow, then usually the next few weeks are pretty busy and that's kind of just how it goes. So I would definitely say as far as the workload and the stress level, it varies. 
and I would say that's pretty common with any job. Another very common question that I get is do you need a degree to become a legal assistant? And for this question, I would say not necessarily. With that said, I do have my bachelor's in political science with a minor in literature and writing, which is typically, at least here in the States, the degree or the area of study that people go into if they want to become a lawyer or if they're pursuing a more legal oriented path. That's typically what they study or they'll do economics, something of that sort. But I would say since my position is relatively entry level in terms of the pay and the benefits that are offered, you don't necessarily need a degree. I think it very much depends on the company you're applying for, your employer, and how strict they are with their requirements. I would say, if anything, I would say experience probably outweighs your education level, but again, it depends on your employer. So if you are interested in that, then I would just make sure you research the company that you're applying for and see what they look for in potential candidates if you are looking to get into the legal field. When I went to college, I did have plans to pursue a legal oriented career, which is where I'm at. Now, whether or not I will become a lawyer or go to law school, that's truly up in the air for me. I think something that I've learned within the past year is that I'm slowly embracing the idea that I don't have to have everything planned, which for me as a type A personality, as someone who is a major planner and is a perfectionist in all areas of my life, especially when it comes to my career, it's a very freeing feeling, I guess you can say, because if you were to ask me a year ago or two years ago, I would have told you, oh yeah, my plans are definitely to go to law school and to become an attorney. Now that I am actually in the field and I've interacted with attorneys and I have a little bit more of a broader perspective on what this world is like, I think for now I would say I don't see myself pursuing law school. I just think it's really stressful. and. Apart from that, I mean, let's talk about the obvious that one, it's very, very expensive. And I think that if you pursue law school and you genuinely want to become an attorney, it should be something that you want to do for the right reasons, not because of the money. And I think for me, the more I reflected on this potential career path, I was very much kind of intrigued by the aesthetic and the appearance of becoming an attorney. But the more I thought about it, I realized I don't think that's what would truly fulfill me inside. I think I have a huge creative streak in me and I just feel like I would be fulfilled doing something else. With that said, I don't plan on leaving my job anytime soon. I really do enjoy becoming a legal, being a legal assistant and helping attorneys. I would say that's my favorite part is interacting with the attorneys and just getting to know them and just learning more about the corporate world. I find it very fascinating, especially when you're dealing with employment law, which is what I'm in. It can get really, really interesting as far as the cases that we onboard. So I don't plan on leaving my job and I do actually plan on maybe getting my paralegal certificate and just kind of working my way up as like a senior paralegal or maybe I could also see myself just staying in the corporate world and being like an HR manager just working my way up the ladder but not necessarily becoming like a full-blown attorney and I did want to just mention that because I know a lot of my content is based around my current role as a legal assistant, but I never want to come off as disingenuous. Um, if people are wondering, like, you're a legal assistant, but you don't plan on becoming an attorney, like, why are you doing that? Isn't that just a waste of time? And to me, I would say no, because like I said, I don't have to have everything planned. And a lot of the times what you do in your early 20s, like very rarely is that what you end up doing as your career. So the possibilities, the possibilities are quite endless. I'm just kind of okay with the idea that I could stay in the legal fields, but I could be pulled in a completely different direction. 
So that was kind of a tangent. Now let's get back to some of the more rapid fire Q&A questions that I get asked. The other question that I get is, what advice would you give to someone starting out or looking to get into the legal industry? So I would say definitely gain as much experience as you can. I think something that a lot of people who are freshly out of college or people who are just starting out in the legal industry, they really struggle to find the confidence to apply for jobs because they think, oh, why would they ever hire me? I don't even have experience. But that's really, again, just kind of how it goes that you have to put yourself out there in order to be told a yes. And if you think about it, it just logically makes sense. Like if you just sit in your room all day and you don't apply because you're so convinced that no one's gonna get you, then you're definitely guaranteeing that you're not gonna get that job versus if you just put your resume and apply for, let's say 20 different jobs, 10 of them you get an interview and then maybe two of them give you an offer. I'm just throwing very random numbers out there. You really do have to get over this idea that they're not gonna like me or I don't have the experience for it because who knows, you may just be exactly what they're looking for. And I find that if you go into an interview with confidence and you make it very clear that you want to learn and that you're willing to learn, that really can impress your employer or whoever you're interviewing with. So definitely that. Also, I would say if you are in the legal field and you've accepted the offer or you're starting out, I would say don't be so hard on yourself about making mistakes. I think that's something that early on I was so hard on myself. Like I remember I would almost like have a breakdown at work because I was so devastated that I made a mistake and to not take things so personally when people give you constructive feedback because the corporate world is, how do I say it? Like the way they communicate isn't meant to like coddle you. Like a lot of the times the way they communicate is very straight and to the point and it's very blunt and it may come off as like rude at first but it's genuinely just because they're trying to like tell you, hey, you did this wrong, this is how you can fix it. So you have to kind of get over your ego of like, I made a mistake, everyone everyone hates me, or I'm, I'm so I'm so stupid. Um, no, it's just, you know, learn from it and don't be hard on yourself. The okay. final kind of category that I wanted to touch on is my role, just like what I do. I've answered this before, but I think it's helpful for those of you who are curious. Um, or want to get into employment law. So my official title is legal assistant. It's not, that's nothing else, just legal assistant. Um, I do work a standard 40 hour job. I do have benefits, your standard benefits. I have an hourly rate, um, so I'm not salaried, which is why I tend to tell people that this is a more entry level position, but you can work up to obviously higher positions in the legal field, like a paralegal um, that would pay you more money. Also, I wanted to kind of address like what I do specifically as a legal assistant because legal assistant covers a broad category of responsibilities and duties, especially depending on the area of field that you're working in. So with mine, with employment law, in my specific role, the way it's structured, my main tasks include helping and onboarding new clients when our firm accepts clients and they are officially retain when the client is officially retained my job is to reach out to the client and ask them okay do you have any questions about you know the policies of our firm um, also i reach out to the client to let them know these are the documents that we need in order to proceed with your case please make sure that you submit these documents by this date now do clients always turn in everything, usually not. Usually I have to kind of like get them to kind of hamper on them to turn them in, turn everything in. So that's kind of where my day is filled up is just following up with clients, reminding them like, hey, we still need this. Or if for example, an attorney is like, um, can you get a little bit more information on this outline that they fill out? That's also part of my role is to help clients fill the necessary documents and forms that our firm has as part of like their standard protocol or things that we just want them to fill out. And also um, if a case is assigned, 
usually I'll work pretty closely with the attorney on helping them get any necessary documents that they need. So you could say that I'm a legal assistant who assists with the onboarding process. That is a overview of what I do as a legal assistant and my responsibilities. I hope I touched on some of the most frequently asked questions. I get a lot of questions that are just phrased differently, but the questions that I did include in this video, those are kind of the main ones that I saw reoccurring in the comments and in my DMs. But I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions, let me know down in the comments and I would be happy to answer them. Um, if you have any other ideas that you would like for this series, let me know because I'm always open to different topics. And with that said, I will see you guys in a new video very, very soon. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.